This is the world of the campus vets. The joints were swollen, which is never a good thing, but I didn't think it was as bad as it ended up being. She's only two years old. All of a sudden, she just started limping, and it got worse and worse. So I was worried she wasn't going to have much of a future running around and playing. It was the first time I worked on the lakes. Western College of Veterinary Medicine is a world-renowned center of learning. In the teaching hospital, vet students are exposed to the latest advances in medical treatment. Hi, sweetie. An Arabian mare has been brought in with her sick four-day-old foal. Its deteriorating condition is a mystery to the horse's owner, Murray Popowell. After the first day, we found that she was a little stiff. And so we uh, called the vet and she came out and looked at it, couldn't find anything. And then today we noticed swollen hocks. This is sedation for the mare. She's going to be pretty excited about us, about us taking her baby away, so we're going to sedate her. It's a race against time to unravel the mystery of the foal's swollen joints. Uli Helvoit is the lead student on this case. Hi, yes, sweetie. The foal looked pretty bright. I mean, yes, the joints were swollen, which is never a good thing, but. I didn't think it was bad. The vets need to act fast. The foal's body is being ravaged by an infection. This foal has infected joints, and what you want to do is you take the joint fluid and send it for culture again to determine what kind of bacteria are involved, and that allows us to decide what kind of antibiotics to put this foal on. Staff veterinarian Dr. Jagdesh Patel suspects a bacterial infection has invaded the joints in the foal's back legs, called hox, resulting in septic arthritis. To combat the growing infection, they'll flush out the buildup of toxic fluid in the joints, a process called tapping. These are the hock joints, and also yeah. the stifle joint on the left hind leg is swollen as well. But the vet team discovers the front legs of the foal are infected as well, a development with ominous consequences. Concerned owner Shana Halbert has arrived with a young Rottweiler with severe knee problems. All of a sudden she just started limping and it got worse and worse. It was hard for her to sit down and so I was worried she wasn't going to have much of a future running around and playing with those bad knees. The case is assigned to on-duty surgical resident Dr. Mark Smith. So this is Kira. She's a two-year-old female Rottweiler that's had a history of lameness in both hind legs for the last few months. She's torn the cruciate ligament in her knee. It's the same injury in people like downhill skiers tearing an ACL or football players. The, uh, it's basically the ACL tear of the, of the dog. Dogs walk like this, and so this is actually the heel bone here, and then the knee joint is, is here, and uh, you can actually even see her knee sort of popping back and forth once in a while. It's quite, quite unstable. So in a little while here, she'll get uh, ready for anesthesia, so she'll be uh, sedated just to make her more relaxed. You can see she's quite nervous. This is no ordinary day for no ordinary lamb. Come on, buddy. We're going to go for a ride. The little orphan, Lambertus, is recovering from three broken legs. Are you ready to go? The hospital has granted Lambertus a day pass to go to school along with animal care technician, Kyle Konstantinov. Well, today we're going to uh, Silver Springs Preschool, where my son goes. We're gonna go get a pig, too. It's okay. Yeah. 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 No seatbelt regulations for pigs. The sick foal has more infected joints than the vet team first thought. Uli breaks the bad news to the foal's owner. Five teeth, maybe? At least, that we can feel. Yeah. The team is increasingly concerned for the now critically ill foal. They proceed with a full blood culture 
and a test for antibodies in the foal's blood. Antibodies every foal should get from its mother's first milk or colostrum. Foals and, and calves need to have that colostrum because they don't have much of an immune system when they're born, so they need to absorb those antibodies so that they can fight off bacteria um, until their immune system kicks in and starts to make their own antibodies. Without the antibodies from the mother's colostrum, it will be near impossible for the foal to fight off this infection. With the help of Lambertus and Snort the pig, Kyle is going to turn a class of preschoolers into vets for the day with hats and masks and gloves. So, today you're going to be my helpers. This is Lambertus. When he was little, his mommy kind of stepped on him, hurt his legs. Why did the bee cream step on him? It stepped on him by accident. That kid's nose is so wet. It feels like kind of wet, isn't it? He uses that nose to dig in the dirt, though. See how it's shaped? It's like a spoon on the end. He can dig in the dirt and look for things, bugs and whatnot. Yeah, but there's not just like any Pumbaa. bugs in there. No, he's just looking. Can you touch him? Yeah, you can touch him. You guys will make good veterinarian someday. Yeah, but how, but how does the This is a farm-based province, and I came from the farm. And I'm, I'm the first generation of my family that lives in the city, and my boy, won't grow up with this. So it's just a way for me to keep that going. And if I can get one of them interested, maybe they'll be a veterinarian. <laughs> Coming up, the team makes a surprising discovery about the sick foal. At the large animal clinic, the Arabian foal's condition continues to worsen. The vet team struggles to come to grips with the now compounding discoveries. Examining the foal's joint fluid deepens their worst fears. So joint fluid should string. Um, it's kind of a viscous solution usually. And when you get inflammation, you get extra fluid in there, so it just gets really liquid. The plan is to take the foal to surgery either later on today or tomorrow to flush those joints under general anesthesia. While the anesthesia department prepares to receive the foal, the vet team does everything they can to fight off the growing infection. So we know she has an infection, so we're going to start her on antibiotics. Hopefully the bacteria is susceptible to our antibiotics. If it's not, we'll switch when we get our results back. But until then, we're starting her on some potent stuff. The foal's worried owner is clinging to hope. Two-year-old Kiera is being prepped for a complex knee surgery. If left untreated, her condition will only worsen. This cut in the bone has to be quite precise, so how much... First, Dr. Smith and his team will scope the knee to assess the damage before cutting and realigning the joint. The final step will be reinforcing the knee with a bone plate. There are quite a number of things that could go wrong. The bone cut is the important thing, that it be in the right location, that it be rotated the right amount, that we have good alignment of the, the leg. The college is one of the few places that offers this type of advanced orthopedic surgery. It's the main reason Dr. Smith has come back to school, to get his surgical training here. Faculty surgeon Dr. Trevor Bebchuk will oversee Dr. Smith's work. I'm Dr. Bebchuk's student, basically, so. It's, uh, it's just different. I guess everybody's learning. I think you're still learning. We're all I'm learning, right? Learning. We're all learning. The day we stop learning is the day we stop improving. So yeah. we, uh, yeah, that's true. We're all students in some form or another. Can we have uh, some room lights down, please? That's good. Using a fiber optic scope, the team is able to assess the badly damaged knee. You can see those things waving in the fluid ahead of us. That's all damaged cruciate ligament that we need to get rid of. So it's like the ends of a mop, basically. It's just all, and, but you can see that it's a fairly complex structure and you can't really get it uh, back to normal strength. The medical team has found more damage than they anticipated. They must now determine if their strategy will work and if they can help Kiera walk pain-free again. Window 
While the foal waits for surgery, the vet students test for antibodies, a test that will have a major impact on this case. It just tests um, the antibody level in the foal's blood to make sure that the foal got enough antibodies from, from sucking the mom when she first had her colostrum in her milk. So I guess you wait till that comes across and then you snap it. I've snapped it. Yeah. Wait seven minutes. If the foal has a healthy level of antibodies in its blood, the test paper will turn blue. Um, eight, that was seven minutes. Seven minutes is up. Oh, it's yeah. not looking very blue. Mm. So, so this spot right here is where our sample is. And if that spot is lighter than the two control spots, then we don't really have white. much there. Yeah. And it's white, yeah. So what does that mean? That means we have more problems than just the septic fall now. We basically have uh, no antibodies in his system. You, know, you can try to treat him with antibiotics, but if he doesn't develop antibodies, He's still susceptible to all sorts of inf infections. Yeah, 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 yeah. What are the chances? If it was only one joint and he had enough antibodies and everything, then I would have given you a better answer. But with multiple joints involved and very little antibody in his system, then there's a good chance that he might have residual problems as far as his function is yeah, concerned. Yeah, exactly. chances are good, bad, fair to poor. I'm sorry to say that, but yeah. he's got multiple joints involved. Yeah, yeah. And that concerns me. Yeah. I felt very sad. Yeah. I mean, I knew that the prognosis was very poor yeah, for this fall. I guess the owner is trying to make a decision whether to pursue treatment or not. Even if the vet team saves the foal, chances are the infection would leave the horse crippled and in pain for the rest of its life. Well, we're going to put the foal down. It's just got too much infection to, to try and keep it. Yeah. It's always a sad moment when you lose one, and, but um, it, it's better now than later in life. It's not a nice thing to do, but it'd be very difficult to look on and, and watch the foal suffer. The body of the foal has been removed from the stall. Even sedated, the mare is frantic without her baby. It's not easy, um, but I think it was the right decision to make in this case and it would have been a long process to save this foal's life if we even could have. Coming up, things get wild in the small animal clinic. Hi, girl. How are you doing today? Got some good food for you. Nice chicken. The female lynx has lost her appetite since she's been separated from her mate of 10 years. Hi, big guy. What's up? Hey. Zookeeper Perry Robinson has had to segregate the male so the two lynx won't breed. If the kittens did grow up, we don't have a market for them. Most zoos have their populations intact, so he's having a vasectomy. The vasectomy surgery will prevent new offspring, but it won't alter the lynx's social relationship with his mate. We've got him in an exam room right now in his carrier, and we are just waiting to weigh him and figure out his pre-medication dose, and then we'll be off to surgery. Vet student Monica Fulton will assist Dr. Denilyn Parker during surgery. I'll pretty much just get to watch and ask questions and see how one's done up close. Whenever we get an unusual animal, especially a, a big cat, in, it's, it's always very popular, so everyone wants to be involved and see it. It's the first time I've worked on a lynx. Putting an animal too dangerous to handle under anesthesia is the first challenge for Dr. Parker. 
and anesthesiologist, Dr. Nigel Cockett. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, use a blow dart. He's not gonna like this very much. He's trying to uh, just distract him a little up there. Okay. Hi. Yeah. Don't look at him. This is uh, the blow dart. There's the drug in the top, and it just injects it with pressurized air. Okay. So are we safe back here? Yeah, you should be okay back there. I don't think it'll bounce out that way. Distract him so you can kind of get up front a little. They're very quick, these guys. Dr. Parker and her team watch and wait for the drug to take effect. Two hours into the operation, the surgeons have cut and rotated the knee joint of Kiera, a young Rottweiler. We're just gonna shave down the step in the bone to make everything flush, so it'll make it easier to put the bone plate on. Be yeah, I wanna get a little more rotation out of it. I think it's good now. You're happy? Yeah. All right. It looks good to me, too. With a knee in the proper position, the bone plate must now be screwed into place to keep the joint from slipping. Tighten that down. Straight. All right. How does it look? Yeah, it's just good. Well, I don't think we're going to get it much more than that. Check for tibial thrust. No, it's right there. That's fast. Once the plate is secured, Dr. Bebchuk leaves Dr. Smith to finish up. So we're just going to run over to radiology now. We'll get some radiographs and uh, see how things look, make sure our implants are where we think they are. The next set of x-rays will determine whether Kiera's four and a half hour operation was a success. After making sure the big cat is sound asleep, Dr. Parker's team gears up for surgery. His heart rate's up there. So go ahead and put him on about three liters and uh, turn the ISO up to about 3%. We're going to clip and scrub the area where we're going to go in and snip the vas deferens on either side. What should be a fairly simple procedure gets off to a challenging start. He's a very large boy and um, he's got quite a bit of fat, so it's making it difficult to find our landmarks. If Dr. Parker can't locate the vas deferens duct that carries the sperm, she'll have no choice but to castrate, negatively changing the lynx's relationship with his mate. Shanna Halbert anxiously waits for the end of her dog's knee surgery. Mine's gone for sure. Hours in the operating room come down to this moment. Kiera's surgical team is about to find out if everything is where it should be in her new knee joint. Yeah, we've got a little bit of a gap forming cranially, but in the back part, good contact, and that's where most of the force is going to be. All right, was your dog? Yes. Okay, let me go get her for you. <laughs> I hope she's not mad at me. Hi, Munch huh? King. Hi, baby. Come here, Munch King. So, kind of a crazy haircut. Hi, baby. Oh, he's happy. Yeah, she settled right down as soon as she got, uh, got here. So it's... I honestly thought she was going to be much worse. Come on, baby. Once Kiera has recovered from the surgery, there is more work ahead. We'll be back for the other leg. Let's go. You ready to go? Dr. Parker and Monica are about to perform a vasectomy on a male lynx but they're having trouble locating his vas deferens duct. They'll try again on the operating table before proceeding with a rather drastic plan B. He's pretty fat, as a lot of uh, zoo animals are, so it might be difficult to find the structure, and we may end up just going ahead and doing a castration, but we'll see once we get in there what we find. Good. Yeah, time down good. <laughs> He's got such little testicles that I imagine he's going to have little vessels and little everything else in this area for what a big boy he is. Keep on rubbing that into this guy. I'm really confident I can feel it. Were you confident you could feel it? Yeah, I do feel a vessel or something. It's deep though, right? Yeah. Now we have to get it out. 
the vet team finds the sperm-carrying duct and is able to complete the vasectomy, avoiding the castration. So we have the spermatic cord here, and um, there's the vessels, the blood vessels, and right here is the duct. So what we want to do is leave the vessels and take the duct away. Okay. Was it easy to find her? It was. Okay. Yeah. I think a lot of people don't know how much training's involved and how much you are expected to know. And somebody can walk into a room with a cat, with a ferret, with a bird. You can't know it all well, and people expect you to, and you just have to do the best you can, I guess, and learn from each of your experiences that you get. The operation goes according to plan. The lynx's fertile days are over. This, this is Denny. Um, the lynx is done, and he's ready to go home tonight. He will be better off in his natural environment, so when he's awake, he'll get sent home. They'll be back together, happy couple, live happily ever after. <laughs> Fairy tale ending. Oh, yeah, I guess where I'm gonna be what? when I grow up. What? A water bomber jet plane. Whoa. Yeah. That's why babies don't wear diapers, so that's why I put the straw in the bottom.